if you transform places, you have a chance of transforming people. Mm. Because if they look around and all of they see is deprivation and despair, it is very hard for anyone to lift themselves out of that. Yeah. Whereas if they look around and they see a pathway to improvement, that creates motivation and, and inspiration. So you are right, action talks yeah. louder than words. Let me just ask, do we think the political system is a problem here? Because if we're talking about somewhere like Knowsley, that's an area which has been neglected for, for decades, if not generations, mm -hmm. and you are not with the best will in the world going to sort that out within a four-year parliamentary term. It isn't possible to implement projects of that magnitude that will solve it. And my observation is that the way the political system works is a government will get in, a party will get into majority in, mm. in parliament. That it's a four-year term. For the first year, they're sort of getting their feet under the table, bit of after the Lord's Mayor show. For the last year, they're, they're practically um, preparing for the election. Mm. And you've got a very small period in the middle when all they're going after is the clickbait. They're just going after the headlines. So when Michael Gove stood up in the Commons and talked about the levelling up agenda, it was high on sound bites but low on substance. Mm. I, I, I don't want you to fall off your chair here, Kim, when I suggest this, <laughs> but is the problem that four-year terms aren't long enough for projects of this magnitude to be properly implemented? Well, four years aren't, you know, and if you look at the levelling up um, white paper, it identifies um, 12 stages, but they talk about wanting to deliver that by 2030. And again, if we're talking about generations, mm. decades of um, um, underfunding, and deindustrialization, you know, it's not going to be achieved in that short period of time, you know, it, because um, it is monumental. But, you know, in terms of Liverpool city region, there's a plan that you know, Steve Rotherham had published in January, the um, prosperity plan that encompasses and everything because prosperity is not just about having a good job. It picks up on those things that you've just mentioned about housing, about good health, about the environment, about transport. So all of those things have been looked at and identified as a must and a need. And, and the city region are looking at those kind of things already, you know, looking at, you know, um, zero carbon by 2040. And that looks at and includes retrofitting houses, um, hydrogen buses, you know, better, cleaner transport systems. You know, so, you know, looking at the long term is, you know, is something that we're doing in the region. But I take your point about that short termism in um, in Parliament. But this government has um, an 80 majority and I have to be realistic in terms of will Labour get in um, next time? You know, I think we're on um, a very big hill. We've got a very big hill to climb, Simon. You know, so they might have uh, a longer period of time. But, you know, there needs to be that commitment to really wanting to achieve change in these most deprived communities that they've turned their backs on. You know, not giving um, any money to Nosley is a clear example to me that, you know, they're not interested in levelling up places like Knowsley. They're more interested in um, providing funding to those constituencies where they've just got a new MP. Yeah, I mean, I mean that is bonkers, isn't it? If an area is 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 really deprived and suffering, if, if you don't prioritise them in a levelling up agenda. Let's just go back to solutions on this, because the fact is we do have this system where four years is the, the usual uh, length of a parliament. What, what about there being cross-party agreement on certain projects which survive mm -hmm. a change of government? So let me, let me just use this example. Mm -hmm. I'm CEO of the Spiring Group. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll be kept on for a little while longer yet. Mm -hmm. But if I did step down or they kick me out or whatever, the projects I've put in place won't walk with me mm -hmm. as long as everyone still agrees that the right things to do. What are the practicalities, do you both think, of a real stock take between all stakeholders and a commitment cross-party, cross-sector to improving these crucial areas we've identified and that there's an agreement that come what may, the plan is delivered? Is that realistic? 
I think this is where devolution is is plays a key role because you know we are political you know as you know Steve is the Labour Metro Mayor and, and I'm a kind of Labour Police and Crime Commissioner but actually devolving powers down and there's a shared commitment then across the locality. You know what I mean? People are wedded to wanting to deliver for their region. And there are examples where, you know, you do get cross-party support. I've worked with... Um, conservative PCCs from across the country who all agree that we need more funding for policing or we need more funding in this area and they will make the same call that I will make to the government even though it's the same party as them. So I think when you get down, when you have devolution and when you have people who really understand the local community and understand that need and they're doing it and they're seeing it on a local, on a, on a day-to-day basis, they're more willing to kind of say, well actually I'm not really bothered about what colour the government is, I'm telling you this is what I need for my area and I think that then hopefully runs beyond any government, any parliament decision because you've got the real local understanding that you're doing things with your communities that will hopefully last beyond whatever government is in. You would hope so, wouldn't you? But Kim, what would happen in... I mean, that's very positive what Emily said. What would happen if the next government said, well, you're going to have less money to do it with? Well, I think and that, that has happened, hasn't yeah. it, unfortunately? But just to reassure you, there is quite a lot of cross-party mm. where that goes on in Parliament. We have select committees that have um, representatives from all parties. We have, you know... Um, all party parliamentary group. So there is a bit of work going on in terms of some of the key issues, but more needs to go on, I would say. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about having enough resources to be able to deliver on a very um, large agenda. We yeah. know that, you know, our NHS hasn't been funded. We have a massive shortage of staff within the NHS. And so while we've um, been going through the pandemic, you know, health inequalities is a major issue in this country. You know, and if we don't have um, adequate numbers of GPs operating in some of these deprived areas, those issues are going to um, escalate. And, and all of those impact on some of the issues that we've mentioned earlier about, you know, the high levels of poverty yeah. and, uh, and um, mortality.